Do you want to make a cool trail effect like this one to see where your object is going in your Godot game? Let me show you how you can easily make it. As a high level, we'll be creating a scene with a single line 2D node and a script. We will then configure a line 2D setting, such as the width and the gradient. In the script, we will add logic to capture the global position of the parent node and use the curve 2D class to round out the trail. Finally, we will add code to the character scene to instantiate the line trail for certain motions. Now let's implement this in Godot. I have links to both the base and completed sample projects in the description if you would like to follow along. I'll be starting with the base sample for this video. First, create a new scene and set Line2D as the root node. Add some points in the editor so we can see what it looks like. These points will be overwritten later by the code, so don't worry about leaving them here. Set the width to something high enough for your taste. Set the width curve to something that shows the line getting larger with distance. I create a curve like this by using the Smooth Set preset, which you can access by right-clicking inside a curve editor and selecting Add Preset. Give the line a color or gradient that you like. For gradients, you can edit the colors individually in the raw data section, or you can double click the handles of the gradient itself. To round out the edges, set the joint mode, the begin cap mode, and the end cap mode to round. You can also check anti-alias in the border section, but I don't think it makes much of a difference either way. In the visibility section, check top level, as this will allow the line 2D to use global coordinates rather than its parents' coordinates when we instantiate it later on. And lastly, set the Z index to something lower than your character so it will display behind it in the game. A negative number often does the trick. Create a new script and attach it to the trail. You can remove the ready function from the boilerplate code as we only need the process function. Before adding any other code, add a class name trail to the first line of the script. This will let us reference it in the character script later. To make the trail smooth, we will use the curve 2D class that Godot offers and assign the line 2D's points from it. Add an on ready variable to create a new curve. In the process function, add a line of code that will capture the parent scene position and add it to the curve. The parent's position drives the shape of the curve each frame and it'll create the illusion of motion. Add a line below that that assigns the line to these points to the baked points of the curve to get the curvature. This function will add the necessary points to our line to make it a smooth curve. Next, to be safe with performance, we'll add logic to limit the number of points the curves can have. On the off chance that the trail is not terminated for a while, we don't want the game to slow down computing thousands of points. Create a constant called max points and set it to something like 2000. In between the logic to add the points to the curve and assign the points, add this code. If the curve has more points than the maximum allowed, this will remove the first point of the curve. After that, we'll need a way to remove the trail once it's done. Depending on your game, you may want to use a timer or you may want to control when the trail should stop tracking. We will illustrate the latter here. Create a new function and call it stop. Add a line to turn off the process function so the trail doesn't track any more points. We can simply remove the trail after, but it'll look a bit nicer if we fade it out first. To do so, create a new tween like this. Tween the modulate A property to zero and with a duration that you like. Await the tween's finish signal and then cue free right after to dispose of the trail instance. Now we have the core logic of the trail completed. However, we need a way to instantiate the trail to use it in game. In my sample, we'll instantiate a trail when the player starts a flick and we'll stop the trail when the player hits the floor. Before we go to the player code, let's add a utility function inside the trail script to create an instance of the trail. Under the stop function, create a new stack function called create that will return a trail. Preload the trail scene, not the script, and return an instance of the preloaded scene. This logic could be done in the script where we would instantiate it, but it's not a bad idea to have it here. In the event you change the trail scene's location or name in the future, you only need to update this one script. I wouldn't sweat it either way. Now we will edit the character script to instantiate the trail. Create a variable at the top of the script called current trail of the trail type. At the bottom of the script, make a new make trail function. Since the stack function we made earlier has no context of the parent scene, we still need some logic here. Add logic to stop the current trail if one already exists. Then add this code to create a new trail and assign it to the current trail. Don't forget to add the instance as a child. Personally, I forget to do this all the time. Finally, to create the trail once the character is flicked, we will call make trail under the logic to set the velocity of the flick. If we run the game now, you can see the trail now works. However, the trail gets ugly when a player hits the floor because we didn't stop the trail effect when hitting the floor yet. The game will most likely have different requirements, but I'll show you how you can do this anyway. To detect a ground collision, we will use the character body 2D's get slide collision logic to detect collisions. However, we have to loop the slide collisions after the move and slide. To make it a bit easier, create a collide function that accepts a kinematic collision 2D as an argument. Call it inside this loop we added after the move and slide function. Then all we need to do is check to see if the player is on the floor. If so, stop the current trail like this. We have to null out the current trail because the player could hit the floor without spawning a replacement trail. We don't 
don't want to get an error like I did earlier. Open the game again and the trail should now look much cleaner. Try flicking in midair. You'll see a new trail get instantiated each time. That's all there is to it. Feel free to play around with it to make it fit your game better. If this video is helpful, consider leaving a like. It helps me help more people like you. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.